Shabbat Shalom everyone. This week we are entering the second book of the five books of Moses, Parashat Sefer Shemot, Parashat Shemot respectively. In English, they call it the book of Exodus. So it's very interesting. In this week's uh, Parashat, we learn all about the birth of Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu, who would become the future leader of Am Yisrael. He is going to be born naturally and we actually learn the miracles that occur during the bondage and the slavery where the, Jew, the Hebrews were enslaved in uh, treacherous uh, slavery. The women brought, they brought to six tuplets, to six tuplets, to six babies in one go, which was uh, splend splendidly miraculous. However, what's interesting in this week's parasha, we see that Moshe Rabbeinu he is born and miracles occur where he is born and uh, he is seen as a future uh, redeemer of Am Yisrael, even Pharaoh and his astrologers actually uh, saw the potential of that this is going to occur. Uh, funnily enough guys, you might be wondering what I'm doing, I'm already preparing for Shabbat and doing the Shabbat shopping so that uh, to get the power to get into Shabbat we always start earlier. So Moshe Rabbeinu Moses is really seen as a potential uh, future leader of Israel. However, it's interesting that a commentator the name the Ramah, he, is, uh, he actually uh, added for the Ashkenazim the, a lot of lot of uh, details, fine details in the code of Jewish law, which uh, Rav Karo had uh, written, going back, we're talking around 600 years ago or something like that. So what's interesting is that we see in this week he brings a halacha from this week's parsha in parsha Shemot that Moshe Rabbeinu, from Moshe Rabbeinu, he refused to be nursed from the Egyptian women or or from a foreign woman, and uh, the, the Rama actually relates over that this halacha is that uh, it's going to be forbidden because why is this so? What, what's the problem? So we equate it with in regards to the laws of Kashrut potentially. We are worried even at a young age, what, what young age, what person, the baby is even going to eat, take and consume from the foreign mouth, for example. And there's this idea of the Tum Tum Halev. There's uh, this idea that, that when a foreign entity comes in some, someone's uh, mouth potentially, it can actually... Uh, damage gives some sort of uh, invalidation to the heart of some sort some sort of a pagum so that's one of the ideas we see in this week's parasha why moshe rabbeinu would not nurse from the egyptian okay so that's very interesting okay we know that moshe rabbeinu he, we also know one thing extra that moshe rabbeinu he was in the future gonna speak to hashem he was actually gonna uh, connect with the shekhinah himself he was actually gonna speak to him so maybe the reason why he was worried about or the uh, Miriam was worried or Batia the Bata Paro was worried about what he's going to consume is is because he is going to in the future speak to Shekhinah he's got to be on an extra high level an extra high level however Rabbi Kamenetsky from America he actually relates over that uh, within regards to this law from here on Parsha Shemot that uh, one we're worried about Moshe at, even at eight days or 30 days or whatever it might have been he's worried about what he's going to eat inside his mouth he's not even taking the milk from a foreign woman. How much more should we be worried? We should have a uh, insight that, according to Rav Kamenetsky, that all of us should view that our children is going to be like Moshe Rabbeinu in the future. One could say, look, I'm not religious, I'm not hardly keeping anything, I only go shul twice a year or whatever it might be. However, no, Moshe Rabbeinu, we were worried at uh, such a young age within regards to Moshe Rabbeinu. So all the more so, even us regular people out here, we should, when our children are born straight away, at the age of just eight days we already do the brit milah the circumcision uh, ceremony we're already worried at such a young age so all of us should treat that whenever we have a baby that's born wherever it might be that he has the power at the end to become the future moshe Rabbeinu, the future moses at that time at that point in time what do we show them at such a young age we show the movies young movies put them by the cartoons with whatever morals and principles bad principles they could be why not imbue them with uh, some shows related to religion to torah why not, uh, instead of buying them maybe books that uh, might not have a good moral message, or whatever it might be, let's order them books that have, teach Alephet the straight away, to teach them uh, the Torah stories, the stories of the great Rabbonim, maybe some of the great classic uh, Torah stories from the Parashiyot. Why don't we do that, even if they might not be religious, even if father himself or the mother himself might not be religious why not at least imbue the child so that in the future that they will become religious at a later stage and you know here we are it's no coincidence here I'm in the supermarket here and uh, one of the things that uh, Moshe Rabbeinu Miriam was worried about about Moshe Rabbeinu was within regards to the kashrut what goes in his mouth so why not people might not even be uh, eating kosher let's just say come to a supermarket like this and one's not religious or full of kosher products all over here 
Turkey, like in Israel, where people can just order whatever they want, which is very interesting over here. So it's, uh, this is a time where we're worried about everything. And they actually say there's a time period during the year of Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, which is known as Aseret Meitshuv, where people take stringencies upon themselves just to eat products that uh, haven't got khal, uh, cut khalav, khalav nukhri to it over here. So, you know, that's one thing one can put on themselves. Also, is something, what's a heksha within regards to what we eat? Everything, even the food that we eat, can have, uh, make the difference to the child when they grow up at a later age, even in the future for many years to come. So, guys, I'll leave you with some scenes of this awesome supermarket here, here in Israel. You can see, uh, I'm really getting ready for Shabbat, doing the Shabbat shopping, buying the pickles, olives for Shabbat. Some uh, amazing food, amazing meat here for Shabbat, you can see. And uh, full of frozen foods here, the corn, everything else. So it's good, to, there's a mitzvah to have tuna on Shabbat, so uh, some nice tuna also. Guys, Shabbat Shalom and enjoy, take care, bye.